We're going to be talking about spirit attachments. How do you know if you have one? How can you prevent this? And if you do have one, how can you be rid of it? But before we get into all of that, we should discuss why we're discussing it. <laughs> like, why did this even come up? So if you are just finding my channel, I always tune in ahead of time with angels and archangels of God's purest love and light. We do high frequency stuff here and I get the message. So this is something that is occurring quite a bit. It's always happened, but um, even more so now. So around 2012, and the few years leading up to that, there was thought to be a collapse in a spiritual sense, okay, not a scientific sense, but in a spiritual sense, a collapsing of the third and fourth dimensions, compress, well, collapsing into each other, compressing into one another. So what does that mean? We were raising up in frequency and the fourth dimension was still just kind of sitting there, right? So we have people having more paranormal experiences suddenly we see this huge influx of people who are now mediums um, wanting to connect to fourth dimensional energy this is tarot reading uh, when done appropriately it's fourth dimensional energy so people were picking up on this energy and i think just wanted to understand it and there's nothing wrong with that but of course as always we want to be careful with everything okay now, how do you know if you have a spirit attachment? First and foremost, you're going to feel a sense of maybe not belonging, uh, foreboding. Now, as I say these things, this is not meant to be a psychological discussion. If you are experiencing symptoms, always make sure you check with an expert. Take care of your mental, physical, and spiritual health. We are only talking about spiritual topics here. Okay. Don't neglect all the other layers of your being. Okay. But you know, if you're feeling this sense of no matter what you do, everything's wrong, uh, feeling like you're being sort of slowed down. It just seems like there are excessive blocks, but more than anything, it is that invasive self-criticism invasive thoughts. If you've ever been having a good day and then all of a sudden something creeps in and you feel like you're being dragged down, the energy is falling. That is one sign that that is happening. Another sign, a lack of progress. Now that can mean a lot of different things, but if this is something that, especially if you're a light worker or someone who works in esoteric arts, if you've ever gotten exhausted you know, again, your, your frequency lowers, you might start feeling like I shouldn't be doing this or, um, you know, like, like you're not doing enough, you know, those kinds of things. Now that this gets into a tricky conversation because you can just have like your natural human moments where you're just feeling a little down and tired and it's temporary and attachment is different. This is a little more pervasive and again, get with a therapist, okay, we're not having a psychological talk right now. We are having a spiritual talk. So if you're having some of these symptoms, get with a therapist, okay? But if you just kind of feel like you yourself are off center or you will feel a presence. If you are sensitive, it will just feel like you're having to carry someone else's existence. Again, that gets into a pretty... <laughs> And pretty big discussion. Some of you might say, well, that's my sibling or that's my daughter or that's my whatever. Okay. I understand the way that you tell the difference is that the feeling will be unexplainable, right? So you might be having all these same kind of, um, I can't, I keep wanting to say off center, just like an off center kind of feeling like you're not fully, um, integrated into your body. It, almost like someone is pulling on you. Have you ever tried to walk forward and someone's dragging you back and saying, where do you think you're going? You're not going anywhere. That is one way. And I think that's coming up first because that is the most typical way that people experience this. Okay. Now, the other big way to tell that you might have an attachment is having a hard time sleeping, obviously nightmares. Okay. It starts to go into 
again, those, those thoughts that keep you up at night, the invasive thoughts, right? Uh, there can also be more, shall I say, visceral signs. Uh, if you ha smell cigarette smoke, that's a big one. Anything that smells, that's more of like, you got a ghost, okay? <laughs> like, it's a little bit of that. But what I'm talking about as far as an attachment, I'm talking more of um, like an energetic influence, Okay, so you can have your whole energy field. A lot of people think that an attachment is like something that like sticks to your shoulder and just you just feel like you got to walk around with this thing on your shoulder. No, that's not what it is. It's in your energy field, something coming in. Maybe it was invited in because you were messing with stuff you shouldn't be messing with. That absolutely happens. Or you get stuck in a down place. Now, this is not to say that if you get in a down place that somehow you deserve to have you know, these attachments or, you know, of course you've got an attachment because you couldn't just, you know, snap out of it. That is not what we're talking about here. I'm going to tell you how you can protect yourself. And I want to first say this happens to everybody. So if you have those spiritual practitioners who claim that this has never happened to them, they're not real spiritual practitioners. We have it happen all the stinking time. Okay, so again, if anybody tries to make you think that they're so above it all that they don't have this, please, if you're out here working with this stuff, okay, it's like being in Grand Central Station. You got a little bit of everything out here, okay? <laughs> it's going to happen. Now, the attachments, when we use the word attachment, um, that's where something kind of lands and we go, okay, <laughs> right? And maybe we don't realize that we don't deserve that, that we don't deserve to have that upon us or as I said before you invite it in how might you invite it in this happens all the time when I get give people readings and they're sitting across from me and I can tell they have an attachment sometimes I can't say anything because they are being so controlled by that energy that they won't hear a thing I have to say and it'll just make it worse so I usually ask, you know, hey, are you up for an energetic clearing? Would that make you feel better? Uh, something along those lines. Now, this gets into a very, very deep conversation. But first and foremost, when you're doing spiritual practice, most of you have come across this video because you're interested in spiritual practice. Please make sure that you are working with Archangel Michael. I always say of God's purest love and light. Why that? Some people... If people are like, oh my gosh, that's so over the top. It's so not necessary. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm so dramatic about this. You do what you want to do, but remember, you're bringing that ick around the rest of us. Okay, thank you. But I always say those words, one, because I want to work with God. I want to work whatever the highest frequency, purest, beautiful, beautifulest, <laughs> most beautiful energy there is. That's whatever that's called. That's what I want to work with, you know, the divine. So I put that energy around it. So there's no mistaking that it's Archangel Michael. And one of the most common questions I still get asked is, how do I know if it's an Archangel, an angel, a spirit guide? And it's interesting. And yes, I understand that that can be a little bit nuanced. That's why I do readings for people. Okay. And since we're talking about if you want to get a reading with me, I am taking live sessions again. I took a week off from those because I was just, I was getting, I needed to rejuvenate a little bit. I was getting tired. Um, but we can start scheduling those again. If you want a live session, email me at angelsouls444 at gmail.com. Please let me know what country you're in and the time zone when you reach out. Okay, does that make sense? And payment is due once you find out that I'm available for a reading, payment is due. Okay, and I, I know, it's, you know, it is what it is. We're all human. But this thing of like someone coming and saying, yes, I want to get a reading and then they stretch it out for weeks and your spot's gone. Okay, like I can't be doing that, especially now those spots are very limited. It's not going to be held. Okay, you feel me? Okay, so emailing if you want that and we can talk about uh, what might be, say I can do an energy read on you and see what might be keeping you from being able to discern what types of beings are around you. Okay, or you could do this on your own. You don't have to get a reading or you don't have to get a reading with me. I mean, it supports me and thank you. <laughs> But, you know, you can do this any way that you feel comfortable. Now, I do have a standard reading as well that does not take any time commitment on your part. I am running well ahead of schedule 
on those. Usually I have a little over a three week waiting period, but I got really caught up on those and I've still been keeping up with it. Now, as the, as of the moment I'm recording this, it's running about a week wait time, but wait, there's more. Okay. Cause I'm going to be working on those tomorrow night, which then gets me to about a one to two day wait time. Once I get those done, I know that's confusing. It's just, it's the process. I don't, I don't know what to say, but it should be one to two days for those who get in um, shortly after you see this video. Now, if you wait, then you're going to wait, but still shouldn't be too long. So if you want a standard reading, angelsouls444.com, you can ask me that same question. I can still do an energy read and I think that's it. Okay. So there's that part out of the way. <laughs> so let's get back to this. I want to give you more signs that, um, you know, you might have something influencing you. And I guess I should go into the discussion of not all attachments are evil. Not all attachments are evil. There could just be spiritual interference and, and the energy fields kind of get stuck. Um, you can get energetic interference with another human being. Okay. Like the, there's a lot that can affect your energy field. But when I say an attachment, people usually think of that as a fallen angel we need to talk about that. If you're interested, I'm not going to go into deep, like naming them or whatever. We're not doing that. And we're being protected by angels of God's purest love and light. But a lot of you, I think I said this last week, a lot of you out there who think you're working with angels and you come and you're bragging to me that you also work with angels. And I, for me, it's a sizzle up my spine. You ain't going to tell me nothing, okay? Like there, there is a very distinct feeling that I get and I know to read, read around what's, what's going on here. And if there's no light, ugh, okay, like that's, 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 not, it's not what you think it is, okay? I don't know what you've been doing, but it's not what you think it is, okay? And a lot of those, what is that? Okay, I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. <laughs> it sounds like someone started up a lawnmower, but it's like the sun's going down. I don't know what that was. Anyway, I apologize. What the heck were we saying? So when I'm reading people and there's no light there and they're so confident in themselves because so many people try to take an intellectual approach to their spiritual practice. If you're taking an intellectual approach to your spiritual practice, one, you are vulnerable to the deception of fallen angels. I don't know what that is. It, it, there's some machine in the background. I don't, it's, the, it's almost dark outside. I'm gonna keep going. That's loud, isn't it? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can y'all just be chill with me? I, I don't know what that is. Or I could just be sitting here saying this and making a big deal out of it and it doesn't pick up on the mic and then I look like an idiot and then I get all the comments, I didn't hear anything, they're saying just keep going, just stop talking about it, just keep, listen. So anyway, <laughs> this is where people start getting fooled by fallen angels with things like number signs. I know, I know. That might have just sent you into a tailspin. This is why it's important that we practice in the highest frequency, in light. That way, when you see something, you'll feel it'll sting. It'll sting. So I don't care if you're seeing 777, okay? I mean, I do care. I care very much. But if you see 777, you get a sting from it. But intellectually, you're going, no, that's supposed to be good luck. This don't even matter anymore. It is about how you feel, okay? So yes, that is being used to manipulate people it's a long discussion. So just be careful and be discerning. First and foremost, the way that you keep the door wide open for darker energies is being in your ego. How do you know you're in your ego? You think you're better than people. You think you're more ascended than people. If you are truly spiritual and truly ascended, then you experience a closeness with others. You see the boundaries, you know, kind of fade a little bit and you start to see, not their boundaries, respect boundaries at all times, but you know what I'm saying? Like the walls start coming down. You can start seeing 
why someone acts the way they do, why someone might be in pain. You know what I mean? Like, and you start having love and compassion for them. When someone is going around going, I have no more learning to do. I've done it all. I, you know, uh, they have an attachment. But what is the one thing that an attachment can't stay, especially the ones that are intentional attachments. So that's what most people picture when we say attachment. So something that is intentionally trying to stop you. Um, I want to be careful with this because I don't want to fuel people's paranoia that I knew something was watching me. You know, get with a therapist. We got to make sure we're psychologically healthy and grounded. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Spiritual sidestepping. I'm not here to fuel anybody's paranoia. Okay. But again, spiritually and strictly spiritually speaking, if you are constantly, uh, again, just thinking that you're above it all and you have secret powers and watch what I can do and I'm going to get revenge on you. That is that type of attachment that is trying to stop your light. Does that make sense? So if you are somebody who has, maybe a lot of people have been traumatized uh, quite deeply uh, and you've had to restore your light, especially those types, you can be very susceptible to that coming in, not because it's your fault, not because you've done anything bad, but there is a concept here of wanting to stop your light. All right. So, and again, this gets into a very deep, discussion, but, um, your prime energy, you are prime energy, uh, for utilizing. And maybe in your life you have sacrificed quite a bit. Okay. Just listen to what I'm saying here. We'll keep this to the level that maybe most people would care to hear. Okay. How do you take care of this. Number one, you have to want to take care of this. Some people feel more powerful or less lonely by having this with them. Even though it's not good for you, it's not good for the other energy, unless it's an energy that's built for destruction, then it's feeding off of you. So it's like a parasitic kind of thing. But if you're like, you know what? I have been doubting myself. I have been feeling like I've lost myself. That's a big one. Been feeling like I've lost myself. I feel constantly drained. Um, just feeling out of sorts. Just not being myself. This is where we bring in Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, Archangel Uriel. You can bring in any Archangel you want. Just make sure they are of the light. Make sure they are of the light interesting that I'm recording this and talking about this and there's something very strange going on outside it sounds like someone's mowing their lawn at nighttime like I don't right so anything to kind of irritate or distract and I'm not saying that some darkness told that person to go mow their lawn I don't <laughs> I don't think so but it is a little interesting that there's a distraction in the background so you bring in these archangels you must be setting your intention for the highest good of everyone involved, the highest, purest light. And how do you access that? You need to find a space of love in your heart chakra. What is, what are we talking about here? I'm talking about, oh, you're mad at somebody. Great story. I brought a tear to my eye. Set that aside. Okay. Find some love. If you love puppies, if you love butterflies, if you love babies, I love babies. Uh, it, you know, just anything that's just pure joy. You love your parents. You love your siblings. You love your children. You know, whatever. You love the blue sky. Find something. Find it. And then don't destroy it. Because that attachment's going to make you believe this is stupid. It gets in through the ego. So the more egotistical you are, the more likely you are to have this running you, okay? So find that little bit of love within your heart. And you can do this a couple of different ways, whatever works for you. If you're a visual person, then you can imagine with every breath, that light and that love expands more and more and more and more and more, right? Uh, for some others, maybe you want to call in Jesus. Maybe you want to call in Mother Mary. 
right? Or you want to call in Archangel Gabriel, or maybe for you it's Moses, it's Abraham, you know, whoever you want to work with, all right? Just make sure you're doing so with the highest intentions, okay? Once you do that, and all love and respect to every belief system out there, I love you all. I'm just not well versed on everything, so if I didn't mention something from, from your faith, I just don't know about it, okay? But I love you. I see you. I'm with you. I'm your sister. <laughs> I'm your sibling. Again, I love you. So whatever your connection is to the divine, let that expand. Now, if you're more of a, I just want to kind of be in the zone and not feel like I have to pressure myself to visualize things, that's fine too, okay? But just breathe into it and imagine or not imagine, be in the void if you want, just the intention will carry you through, that you are getting to this space of love. You're expanding that light. And then the archangels are going to do the rest. You let them know, hey, I want this. I want my energy cleaned out. For me, I call it the energetic tune-up. Um, I feel a little something annoying there. And I go, okay, angels, come on in here. Give me, give me a little tune-up. And it's kind of like shaking them off a little bit, right? Or if it's something deeper, I got fuzzies in my face and everything. Okay, I have whatever. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> all these things happening. But just allowing your energy field to be cleansed and cleared out. This archangelic high frequency energy is going to do it. Okay, there you go. Now, what do you need to be doing? Because you're probably, your ego is going to get involved and say, it's got to be more complicated than that. Why? Well, because this one person, that's because that one person in order to connect to the divine had to clear out their ego by doing a ton of steps in between. And that is fine. That does not mean that they don't know what they're talking about. It doesn't mean that they're wrong. It's just that's what they need for their physicality to feel grounded and connected. That doesn't necessarily have to apply to you. You feel me? Right? Same thing while we're on the topic. With crystals, these are moonstones in this ring here. Um, ask angels to clear the energy of them. Do you have to dip them in salt water and do all of that? No. Not if you're working with angels of the highest frequency. Ta-da! There you go. <laughs> right? So while you're in this space, allow them... Yeah, they're even telling me now, like, the biggest obstacle to this technique of an energy clearing is that people are not accepting of the love they're bringing in. They're not trusting it because, yeah, they're saying it's a fear of, no, 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 don't try and make me believe that I have nothing to fear because that's when it'll get me, right? And so we hang on to it. Now, I'm not telling you not to be discerning or <laughs> aware. I'm Yes, always take care of yourself in that way. But in a moment like this, you can allow that love to come on in. Then we want to shield. You've heard about this, right? Like you can shield yourself in layers, okay? Layer up. So the white light is usually white and gold. That's usually guardian angel frequency. Depends on who you talk to. Everybody's got an opinion about it or an experience that they think is fact. Cool. Uh, so <laughs> you can surround yourself with that. You might even feel like your guardian angels are posted in your energy field and watching uh, for anything that might want to come and harm and making sure it gets deflected back. But here's the thing. You want to take that attachment and treat it with love. And that's what a lot of humans can't do. You have to treat it with love. Even if you have to be neutral, it's better than standing there and saying, I banish you to hell. Like, they know where they belong. And that's not even a punishment for them, probably. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. But just, you know, go on back. You do not belong here. If you need to be more immediate and more forceful, I've had moments. I was just talking about a scary moment last week. God help. Jesus is with me. Uh, or whatever works for you. Okay, that's just the approach that I take. So when you're in that space and you're allowing this flow, okay, you seal off golden and white light, put some good blue around, that's Archangel Michael, let's put some orange around that, that's Metatron, 
P.S. Metatron can also be sort of a shifting blue purple color. Doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't really matter. Just keep surrounding yourself with all these beautiful colors. All the love is still going to be able to come through to you, but it will keep out anything that doesn't belong there. You know, I did touch on this. Let me elaborate on this. When you get tired, you know when you get tired and you don't feel inspired? It doesn't necessarily have to be an attachment, but that's what an attachment can also feel like. So just be aware of that. If you've just lost like any energy to do anything that used to make you feel really alive, again, get with a therapist because if it's something, even if you think spiritually speaking, it's some sort of attachment, it's still going to have a psychological and physical effect on you. So potentially, so you want to make sure that you are talking to somebody, you're well supported, you're in good hands. Okay. Don't mess around with that. So I kind of gave you these little tidbits around this. We are going to pull some cards here as well. Um, to use this deck this week, but I, I just want you guys to be aware because these attachments, you know, it's, they're losing power. They're starving. And what happens when something is starving? It will do anything to feed. Now, this is working through people as well. Some of those, those are more, huh, that's more an invasive thing. But you're seeing it. You hear all the stories out there. By the way, um, and don't laugh at this. I, I am being completely serious about this. Send some love. I don't know if it's okay for me to say the name here, but like, a famous Justin B. Okay. Pray for him. Send that good love out there. He is a human being. The feeling I get around him, he needs help right now. He needs everybody to love him. Not in an egotistical way, but in the let's shield him kind of way. I, I said what I said. Okay. Don't, don't do this weird thing of like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Like, grow up. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably talking to some of you out there. I can't believe she just said that. Again, these are human beings, okay? No, he didn't choose where he's at. Okay, so magical map shifter 52. So there's, there's the first card. Some of you need to get back online with yourselves, getting back to who you really are, to things that you really love. Listening, 53. I have an interesting feel. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the message more. So forgive me while I sit here with this. Opening the pathways. Wishing well. Look at that. The number on there is 48. The lights are awfully bright. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the wishing well. You know, this isn't about... I'm going to, it's not about trickery, right? Because then you're just clouding up your energy field and making yourself more susceptible to things like attachments and energetic influence, okay? You don't need to have all the material things. If you end up with the material things, okay. But if that is your whole life, your whole existence is chasing the material things, you're never going to find happiness. And let me tell you something. I... I've been very open about this. Have had several trauma, like constant traumas to where I told a therapist about this. It took months and she didn't believe me. She did not believe me. And I remember in one of the sessions I had to stop because I saw her reacting to what I was saying. And I said, should we, should I stop talking about this today? Are you okay? Because I knew it was a lot to take. So... When you have that amount of experiences, at least for me and the way I responded to it, I've constantly been chasing something. I don't know if we want to call it a distraction or something. I don't know. Novel, maybe. Um, something exciting. I've always been chasing excitement. So if it seemed like it was beyond reach, I was going to go for it. And once I got it, the novelty would wear off. Okay. 
And guess what? The pain started coming back in. And I started feeling vulnerable again. And then I had to go have a fresh start again. Right? So I've been living my life like that. And it's only been up until now that I've stopped doing that. And it has um, not been pleasant always. It feels like the walls are caving in sometimes. Um, Some people will disguise that as, oh, I'm just super adventurous. Oh, I'm a free spirit. I just need to be, why? Here's the thing. Even if you call yourself a free spirit, what I'm learning is that being still and exploring what's right there in front of you it can be some of the most, the most valuable teachings that I would have missed because I was constantly challenging myself to have a new beginning, to have a new start, not committing to anything. I mean, this channel is probably <laughs> the biggest commitment I've ever made in my life, right? So this is not a time of trying to like, yeah, here we go. Um, this is not a time to try to chase some sort of grandiose thing that will help you escape your life. You feel me? Again, everyone's going to be different. Get a reading if you care to. Angelsouls444.com. We can, you know, see what's going on there. But there's, this is Stormfields and the number is nine. Massive change coming. And of course, we are in tornado season here in the United States. So please be careful, especially down there in Texas. Oklahoma just got hit horrifically so send a lot of love to them a lot of praying for them but this is what needs to happen there's almost like this destruction moment so that you can realize what's truly important and start to manifest through that lens because the things I'm telling you glam the glamorous life you know people you would have looked up to it's crumbling down now it is crumbling down All those things that you thought, well, this is what, <coughs> pardon me, this is what marks my success. Something's going to happen. Like it, it'll be taken by the bank. And if it's a house, I don't know. Just be careful out there, okay? So I just wanted to pull one card from the Magdalene Oracle, and it's Magdalene. Magdalene is such a beautiful example of transformation. And what's more, I always perceive her, not that she's the tornado, but that she's always the one having to run from the tornado. She was always the one having to prove herself, proving her loyalty to Jesus, proving that she, in their eyes, had been rehabilitated, that she was worthy. That, to me, is what this whole time is about whenever you see this video and we'll be releasing it on uh what is today april 29th 2024 if that is meaningful to you but remember i think a lot of you are going through this sort of magdalene moment where maybe you have been misjudged maybe you have had to prove yourself or feeling like you're paying your dues again and again and again if you're around my age If you felt like after everything I've been through, shouldn't it be easy by now? And then looking back and going, where did the time go? If you've like, I've been rewatching friends, by the way, David Schwimmer, I never realized just how hot he is, (laughs) but watching that or watching shows like sex in the city, there is something. And you know, I was in my heyday when those shows were, well, I was a teenager when, um, some of them were coming on, but I don't know, looking back, it's almost depressing because I remember those times and they feel like they were just yesterday. And the passing of time is, is, uh, it's heart wrenching. It's heart wrenching. And to remember just how optimistic, despite everything, how optimistic I was that it was all going to be for something that, okay, I suffered All those things happened, but I've got my whole life ahead of me and I can do anything with it. That's what kept me alive. And then I watch these shows and I look back and I'm like, well, dang, I didn't do anything, (laughs) which isn't true. I've done quite a bit with my life, right? (laughs) I've done, had, had all those adventures, 
but I ended up right back where I started from. And I know I have such faith in God that this, this is no accident. This is no accident. And it's been a wild adventure and just stopping and being still for a moment. Things have popped up where I've ended up being around people that I've learned so much from. I'm relearning the value of connection as opposed to being afraid to connect with others. Um, learning what it is to, to work as a team with people to open my heart in a healthy way to others. And also when I am around people who are not very healthy minded, who are very egotistical, who, you know, have to have a lot of validation from other people. I'm learning more and more. It's okay to protect myself while simultaneously not judging them because they have the same past as me. Most likely I went one direction. They went another. We're witnessing their coping mechanism. Now that is no excuse for any form of mistreatment ever. Okay. But these are just some things that I've learned and I've still experienced and I'm still experiencing. And, uh, I don't know. I felt like compelled to share that. So I think it's gotta be for some reason, right? Make sure you come back to this video. Let me know if you care to, uh, how this fits into your life. What has this made you think of? Have you ever had a time like this where you ended up right back? <laughs> like you took the long way around just to end up right back where you started from. What was that like for you? Or are you going through it right now? Or are you somebody who's young watching this and you feel like you have your whole life ahead of you? If you care to share your experience if you want to ask questions of people who are a little bit older than you, although we're not of the same generation, not experiencing the same things, I'm happy to, you know, answer anything. If you have questions, I don't know what those would be, but you know, just, I want connection here and I want pure connection. I want a community here and that's why I keep showing up. So we're going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care. <music>